Hatch Kid one. I'm still waiting on mine. Hunter told me how good it was one day, and I was like, that's awesome. And I thought that he was going to bring it in. How much are they? Two bucks. Not average. Two bucks. Not average. Yeah. 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 You, you, your best deal is at Walmart. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two bucks. Sam's Club, you can get, like, pallets of them. Stop killing you. A pallet. You can get a point more back at Walmart or Sam's Club for $59. That, that they got that stuff with almost the same caffeine content at Aldi for a buck fifteen or something like that. They, they taste exactly the same. Mm. I buy it. That's a uh, gets of it. That's you gets of it. You can buy those on food stamps. You can buy these on food stamps. No, those are supplement. That's a pre supplement. That's a pre workout. Yeah, that's what I normally use it for. It's pre workout. It has creatine in it. I buy um, lots of vitamins. Yeah, so I like, that's why I buy Bang because it's it's, it's pretty good. Like bangs, but my oh my gosh, gosh, whenever I put it in, my wife was numb. Caffeine content in Bang more than that. I don't think it's too. Everything. Well, me and my dad, when I was my grandma had her auction for the house. My cousin was trying to sell them, but nobody wanted energy drinks because they're all older people that are at the auction. Barney so down. he had all these bangs afterwards. Me and my dad drank three of them before we left the house. It's like eight o'clock that night. We were up till three thirty the next morning. I could drink fourteen of them and go straight to bed. Really? Not me. I am with caffeine. So the time. I can drink. I drink monsters when I'm upstairs playing video games, and I'll just go to bed. Drink <laughs> one of the day already. Those are hard on your heart. I drink. I drink the low carb, no sugar ones, something like that. I don't like. Stuff with sugar in it. Why she eat with your. But it's still bad for her. Like all fake sugar. There's the good stuff there. Look what our turkey is. Our coffee from is those are. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Well, them creatine thing, you take them. If you take too much creatine, you can really hurt yourself. You do it after it, as long as you don't drink. If you don't, you, you can take as much creatine as you want because creatine's natural. But you, you can't drink water. Yeah, you can't dry scoop it. You dry scoop it, you just gotta drink water afterwards. Yeah. What is it like something with your. Like dehydrate your yeah, kidneys. Like dehydrate you super bad. Dehydrate your kidneys. My buddy was doing creatine to get high for a while. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, All he did was pretty much have ro- roid rage and fucking go to sleep. He was yeah. roid rage pretty much. Yeah, I'm not sure how creatine would do that to you. I guess. Um, I mean, creatine's a it's a vascular dilator. It doesn't. All it does is make your your veins swell up. So it makes them. It makes them. Attract water. They, it, it's like a. It's like filling a water hose is all that it is. Shouldn't shouldn't change anything like that. But There's that's a feeling to it. But mm, no, so the, it's probably not the creatine. It's probably the caffeine in it. The beta, uh, it's the beta alanine. Okay. It does it. That's what makes your face feel like it's on fire like that. That's what makes you tingly. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's what tingly. Yeah, actually, it works yeah. out obviously. Yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, if you, I mean, that's what you know when you buy a pre workout, you want to make sure that you're buying the things that you want it to be. You don't want to just be like, boop. Oh, grab this this one because I mean this might have just a whole bunch of junk. It's like mass, like mass builders. It like if you buy like mass weight gainers. Yeah, the mass. My brother used to do it. Like almost all of that comes out of the toilet. It's a waste. It's a huge waste. It's your body can't absorb those things like that. My buddy's one of those professional bodybuilders at trade shows and stuff. Right now it's off season. He gets fat as hell. Whenever he starts working out, he bulks up so quickly with creatine. It's like, you know, it's crazy. He used to be as small as Hunter in high school, and now he's bigger than I am. Dang. You're like the before shot, dude. That's not cool. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure everybody appreciates that on the video. But, um, so, anyways, let's talk about, real quickly, um, about some of our um, things that we will, we'll, the, probably the first things that we're quick to not do. When we start to feel like we are behind on things, we start to skip things. Oftentimes those things are the checks that we do, like G54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, X0, Y0, and then bringing it down and make sure that you're where you need to be. Okay, that G whatever, I don't know what okay. it. We'll look at We'll look at some of those things. So those, your work. I line number, but, and yeah. I know it's telling you something. But. It's, it's, it's where, um, it's the... It's the, actually, you, you actually said it one day, it's the address on where it is on the table. Well, what is on the part table? Part is on the table. Okay. So when you set your edge finding and you set it at 56 or 57 or whatever, G54 through 59, that's where it sits on the table. That allows us to run multiple jobs on the table. 
We're delayed. We're not really able to do that as much. That's why we left G54 through 59 zero when we were running the lathes. Now, if you're running multiple parts on the lathe um, or multiple spindles or multiple setups like that, then you might, you would probably find yourself doing that. So let's just say you're running a bar feeder and you ran 20 of this job and then it switched to 10 of this job and then 50 of this job. Well, then you might have different offsets, probably primarily in Z, not in X. Can you run two parts at once? Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I've seen that happen. What do you mean? It's awesome. Like on the... It has a spindle on the side, and then it has the like a, the mills that have like a lathe kind of in it, but not really. Oh, like a, a rotary axis? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, lots of times on the lathes, if they're twin spindle, um, you'll be running like a front side, and then the front side then transfers to over here, and you run a second side, and then you're running a front side over here. So you're kind of just assembly lining it, you know, as it goes, and then it might go into a parts catcher or something like that. And also, how come Ed's class got to have the cooler handles? Okay, because <laughs> those handles look way cooler than our own. Oh, brass ones, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. I told you when we were doing those, I said, this is the first time that we're doing these. We're going to try them out. If I like them, then we're going to move to brass. So you guys were my beta. Oh, yeah, we were the two. On those. So we need the last ones to make the rock and all of them. Hey, guys, really, I need a lot of information here. I know. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. one of my distractions here. Just put some of your Loctite on it. <laughs> yeah, you did, I know it's it's just it's the bottom. I don't. It's just the little. It's the two that you had to make. It was the. It's the biggest one. Really? I don't know why okay. it's that one. So always. So when you're looking through your program after you get your tool numbers set into the right places, and and you really rarely in a job are tools ever going to be placed one two three four five. That's very very rare. So. And here's why. So, like, you take, like, something like this horizontal that has 120 tools in it. You put tools in there, and you leave them there. So, like, the job might be running tool 1, tool 7, tool 45, tool 93. It doesn't have to be in order. That's probably one of the biggest, like, unrealistic thing that we do for you guys is everybody thinks that tools should go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. When they added, there is no reason for them to go. There's no... There's no speed advantage in doing that, really, you know. And so what happens, and so just like before when I said, hey, the probes are going to be in one now, everybody wanted to move all the tools down and go, oh, well, we'll go two, three, four, five. We'll just move everything down. Well, no, don't. Just take tool one, move it to a different location, leave everything else alone. So it does not matter if tools go one, two, three, four, five. What matters, and here's what, what I'm seeing already, is that when I come up and you have a problem, you can't articulate to me where your tools are at. So when I go, okay, so where's, where's what's tool two? It's my next tool I'm going to run. Well, what is that? It's the, um, uh, it's the, yeah. And so, well, but I mean, whatever it might happen to be, it's, you got to know what your tools are. Okay, so knowing those things are, what they are, write them down. I'm also seeing problems at the tool presetter. Where, <laughs> yes, it is. It's not working right for me. I'm doing something wrong. Right. Are you getting negative numbers? I get one number one time, and if I go back and then put it back in again, I get a different number, and if I put it back but in how much? I get so, a number, or by how much? You're, what you need to make sure is that the crosshatch yes. is at the very top. Because it's, what? there's a, there's a, like a, there's a line that goes this way, and there's one that goes on the side. It's going to crosshair the tip of it, kind of like this. Oh, mine never crosshairs the tip. You line it you up. to the side. Well, but that's still the tip. So, like, if the tool's like yeah. this. Yes, that's what mine, mine does. Okay. So, sometimes it doesn't, though. So, like, Eric's yesterday, it was here. Oh, we yeah. can't do that. I know. And, and, and so. Oh, at the top of the lightest part, not right. the top and of the. What happened was he got in a hurry. And that's what happened. Like, take the time to do the step. And so he was off by the length of what this was. Okay, so if you're, yeah. Oh, so for that, like, if we turn it around, are we supposed to have it solid green or? That's what I do. That's what green. The parts are so already if, in right if length. it's going and it doesn't have much run out or whatever it might happen to be, um, it may turn green. Okay. The idea is if you have to have a tool that, um, 
no run out. Let's just say you're going to try to take a three thin mill and you want to do um, wobble. Okay. Um, and you want to try to make it do a three eighths keyway. That means you can't have any run out in the tool, right? If you're going to do that, because any kind of run out is just going to oversize the, the three eighths. So then you're going to need to make sure that the tool is, is really running perfectly true. On yours, let's just say a spot drill or a drill, it's not uncommon for that drill to have a little bit of wobble through it. There, I'm not worried about it. I, and I, I don't think that you should be worried about it. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing end mills and stuff like that, first of all, 90% of your problem comes from that you're not cleaning out the tool cavity enough. And so you're doing something like this. All you did was spit in it. Well, I've cut myself right. quite a few times trying to clean this. So you things take out. a towel, clean it out, should be dry. Then, then look at the collet. Like lots of times I'll pull them out. The, the cavity might be clean, collet's full of chips. The collet can't compress evenly when it's full of chips. But everybody's so concerned about, or they're still concerned about getting their thing done, or they see somebody else going to the presenter. And they run over there real quick. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, you actually just caused yourself more trouble than so you know, you're saying that we do something else chips in the in the collet in the cavity anything that you put in there will add to run out with inside of that but I mean, on the actual drill bit in the we, we got no, no, i don't really i mean the drill bit will have chips and stuff on it or a can but this is be the, the where it seats down in and mounts down into it we have a three yeah. drill though it should read three eighths on the sheet somewhere near it should read somewhere close to three eighths, but it also depends on where you're at on the spiral of the flutes. So, um, I have half inch in numbers are going to sit there and yeah, they do, um, do the higher one and go on. Yeah, go into the tool room. I'm not too worried about uh, diameter. You're mostly worried about that. Yeah. There's a skinnier yeah, one. I don't understand why my number It's on how often do you want to do it not every single time you put it into the left hand drawer of the spot. No, I'm just saying, we get all together and everything, and I can put it in. That's what I was having. We were talking about because it was the three inch drill. How much is on the diameters? I don't know, it was all just a little bit. I was like, okay, that's that's close enough to three eighths. I put it in between yeah. at three eighths. So you're really only super concerned about diameters being off if it's something like an end mill uh, or something that's actually causing diameter machining. Okay, so spot drill. A spot drill is what a spot drill is. A drill is what a drill is. A tap is what a tap is. Um, they're not doing any kind of circular interpolation. They're only doing Z moves, right? So, so if the tool does lineal movements and kind of goes around, if it's got a diameter comp to it, then, then those are where really the diameters of things are going to start to matter. But, I mean, you should be able to take um, a tool, put it in there, and if it does get green, that's great, but it might, it might not reach green, but it might be at, 375 and one tenth. Mm -hmm. um, it's one tenth. And so you, you got to kind of factor those things out. Green is just saying this is perfect. It can also have a speck of dust mm -hmm. that will cause a tenth <laughs> run out on there. So again, it's about how clean it is, you know. So, it, you know, how, how dirty or clean it is really, really matters as to how. Yeah, I just got to worry about keeping my. I, I, I'm one of the worst about going to the drill. And Absolutely. Put me right back because it doesn't look right. Make sure that your tool is tight. I mean, super tight. Because I try to stay away from things like drill chucks. Drill chucks have been really beat to death, and they have a tendency to have lots of runout in them. Um, and so, you guys have been doing good about using collets. Collets are what we want to use. We want to get those other collets that are out in those red boxes put away today. Um, a couple things that I'm also seeing. So, it's some of those things where you're not doing. Um, X0, Y0, running over to the corner, make sure that it's in the right spot at first. So what, okay, I need to write this down. It also, yeah, that would be a really good idea. Um, also, it's getting in a hurry and not offsetting the radius of your edge finder. Um, so like... Uh, thousands instead of 200? Yes. Nope, a, a hundred thousands. Um, so like um, John Yeager turned this in to me yesterday. What's wrong with it? Missing one side. Or the one side's way smaller than it's off one hundred thousandths mm -hmm. in both X and Y. I can see it. I mean, I don't even have to check it. I know it's it. Is. So it needs to be shifted over hundred, and it needs to be shifted up one hundred. 
Well, that, that's when we do the point to each side. Well. I did this, but mine was off by a two. Yeah, so if your edge finder is a half inch, then you offset it by the 250. If your edge finder is 200, then you offset it by the 100. If it's three eighths, then you offset it by, you know, you just divide it in half. Divide and it by two. That's, that's how much you'll change it by. And that drill will. When I go to set, I go to the 100,000 or 100. And just move. Yeah, super egg shaped on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's. Or, or now when we do when, that, I, when I'm edge binding, I'm, I'll go to the edge, go up above, and then and move it over that one back. click of 100,000. Are you doing letting it kick over? Yeah. I'm letting it kick over. And let it do the kick. Me, and is that, so I don't need to do the math if I did that? No, you don't have to. It, you just did the math by the machine moving it. If, I, if, if when it kicks out, I bring it up, and then I click it back towards the part, one click. When you're on, you're on the 100,000. Yeah, and he told me. As long as the end of your edge finder is 200 thousandths and you're clicking it in the right direction that it goes back over to the center, then you're okay. <clears throat> okay. So, and it's on an edge. I mean, at the same way, even if the part, even if you're trying to find the middle, you'll click over to that 100 thousandths. And then if your part's three inches wide and you got to go to the middle of the part, then you got to go another inch and a half to get to the middle of the part. Okay, and you keep talking about going to the middle of the part. Does it tell you somewhere in there that you're... Yeah, I'm going to show you a couple examples on, on, and it's actually answering your question about which, how to locate the offset for it. So... Okay, we'll be on offset 2.2. So, the other thing that I'm seeing is that um, you're either not running it in graphics or... I ran mine in graphics and it looked... It looked weird, but I had my uh, offsets right because I did the zero zero and went to my top left, but it still looked wrong. Okay, so think about what graphics is doing. It's only checking to make sure that it's doing those movements. It's not actually, it's not verifying that you won't have a problem. It's really verifying that you are using the right program. Okay, so if you've got it set up and um, you don't have some things going. It, it wouldn't know. How would it I know? I'm frustrated with that because it was saying my Z was at negative 18 like it's supposed to, but it was saying it's going too far. Because your tool length was so off. My tool length was off. Yeah. Exactly. So, so it's not run, and if red light it, then flag it to the second and run through it. I'm like, what in the heck is going on? Right. Because you saw my spindle was in the wrong spot. Right. But again, that comes down to. Those are primary things where you've got to say, I know what tools I'm running. I know my tool links should be positive numbers. And I know that my work offsets, my Zs are almost always going to be negative numbers. My Xs and my Ys are almost always going to be negative numbers. Because the upper, so like looking at the machine, this is zero for the home, for the machine. So that means anything in this quadrant is going to be negative. So you're going y minus 1, y minus 2, y minus 3, y minus 4. So if you edge find at the rigid vice jaw in y, and then you need to come down 3 quarters of an inch, you know it should get more negative by 3 quarters of an inch. If you edge find over here, and you need to come to the middle of the part, you know it should get less negative by however much you move, okay? So if I'm on the left Over side of the here, it should get more left negative. Left side positive, like if I'm moving it inch and a half like to get to the center on that point. Just remember, the more you go this way, the more negative is. The more you go this way, the more negative is. The more that you come to you, the more yet. negative it is. The more you go across, the more negative it is. Because this is home, okay? So everything is going to be, think about it in the quadrants. So. This is zero, so you got Y and you got X. Everything over here is positive. You can't get to that point. You can't get to this point. You can't get to this point. You can only be in this quadrant here, and it's negative, negative. Okay? Well, if I touch off on the left side... So it's, it's, it's your Cartesian coordinates and your graphing in geometry. It's exactly what it is. It's in the book. Absolutely. My offset to start in the top right-hand corner. I need to start on the right side and on for the X or Y. And then Y on top. Like if my part's here, Y would be here and X this intersection, right corner, right? If you're in the upper right hand corner yeah. for X and Y zero. Find off yes. the right side and the top instead of the left side. The right side and the top, yes. Okay. 
But then if I'm trying to get the zero in the center, I can use either side as long as I add it right. Mm -hmm. As long as you just, yeah. See, that's where I got so confused because Marshall's like, you got to touch up on the right if you're doing the middle. I'm like, why? <laughs> so you don't, but but again. Common sense. Where is everybody today? I don't know, man, but there's been this sickness going around, and, like, there's schools closing early because of the flu. There is. So, um, okay, here was mid <laughs> Milling Widget 1, and then here is the program for Milling Widget 1. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so it shows stock is 3 by 2 by 1, x0, y0 is in the top left corner. Off the left, or not probe, but edge find from the left side and the top side. Most likely, yeah. I would, I would come over here, edge find on this edge, edge find on this edge. Yeah. Um, Z zero is top of stock, set stock in the middle of the device, no more than a quarter inch below the jaws, and then your tool number is three, four, five. Okay. So then I'm gonna start scanning through the program, and I'm gonna look for G fifty four through fifty nine. On this one, it happens to be at line 35 is my G54. So that's your offset for the program. That's your work offset. That's the address of where in 35. I don't know if I can make it any bigger. Look at that. That's a smart TV right there. Um, G54 through 59 are the only offsets that we use in this class. I didn't try and talk to me. Just call me Nate. Just what? Oh, yeah, I do, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's Australian. Um, so, the G54 through 59 is where that's at. So then, when we're doing these tool change things, and this is very much operator stuff, not, oftentimes you're not going to get a program that works perfectly to, like, you could just plug the program in, hit cycle start and go. Yeah, you like to do. Yeah, because I because otherwise, if I were only trying to show you that, the class is a, that's not eight weeks. That's like eight minutes of going, put the program in, hit this, hit cycle start, you're a master, you and know. If we want to you change our offset, sell in the workforce, we right. got to offer more than just being able to run a machine. Right. So you, yeah, you've got to be able to, to decipher things within the program. So. I was having a problem yesterday with you, too. I had my T3. And then my H3 or whatever. But then you had to go down throughout the whole program on that back side. Right. We're getting there. Okay. So depending on the program for what it is, on some programs, um, they're going to have no cutter compensation at all. So if you run the program through, you put your diameters in as the diameter is, it runs fine graphically. You're probably fine. Okay. Always put your diameters in as you go. Okay. So now this one, um, as, you, as you scan through it, pretty straightforward, no cutter compensation, none of those things that you have to worry about, just lines of code, you run it through graphics, good to go. Okay, um, if you need to change tool numbers, you change tool numbers. Remember we talked about H and T, H and T have to match. And as long as H and T matches, then you're good to go. Okay, so now here's tapping widget. Yeah, that one. I'll go side of that yeah. one. So um, G43 has the H on it. It would be the same tool number as your tool number. Okay, so um, if, if it's tool it. 7, so M6, T7, then G43, H7, they're always going to be the same. And so most of the machines will tell you H and T don't match, and so you need to do something Why about it. always a zero in front of the H, like H05. Yeah. Five, 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 type five. it in. Well, so you don't have to type it in as zero five. You, you just hit five and put that zero back in it. Because it can have it back in for you. Right? It can be du double digits. Okay. I was just wondering why yeah. that one's double yeah. digits and all the other ones aren't. Yeah. So yeah, they, you can you can have those in as double digits. Same, Same thing with the diameter comp. It can be a double digit diameter. Right. Comp. Yeah. Same, Same thing with G zero. G zero is really G zero zero. Um, you can type in G1 and it'll change it to G01 because the real address of it is G01 for movement. Okay. So um, here um, you've got two operation part. One operation touches off one way, one operation touches off a different way. And so in this one, stock is inch and a half by inch and a half by three. X0, Y0 is the back right corner. Okay, so that's up here. 
So that means we're going to go off the right side and the top, right? Okay, so, okay. but I think you were telling me that I didn't make some adjustment because I did move to that corner. I mean, that that would um, I think on that one, um, I can't remember exactly what was going on with that one, but it was either you were on the wrong offset or you had touched off on the wrong X. So like your Y was right, but your X was maybe over here. And then, and then so your, your part there. was over here and yeah, I moved it over there and then I did it and it still ran. Yeah. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to go, okay, hey, can't use T1. So I'm going to take my half inch end mill and move it to T5. Right. Okay, so when I see T1, which is my first tool that's going to run, I'm going to change that to T5. I'm going to go down to my G43, change that to H5. Yeah. Now I'm looking for my work offset. It's work offset 56. I'm going to make sure. Yeah. It's blank after the 56. Yeah. I mean, it's just telling you the work offset's 56. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't have to have numbers behind it. It's just telling you that's the offset that we're doing. We're doing offset 56. How long can a code get? 30, 50 pages, as long as you want. Long. We're going to have to limit you to one monster a day. I'm going right now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> thinking about giving you some NyQuil. Okay. Well. okay. <laughs> For, are you talking about a program number? The N25, N30. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Can I go into probably thousands? Probably. I mean, yeah, it could go, th like, line number 38,000 would not be uncommon. So that, it's, because it, you set the machine to read the increments of what you want. So if you'll notice on the increments there in increments of five, that way if you need to edit something in, you can put something in and you've got five, five numbers to do it. But you can still have, like, so say you wanted to, you wanted to do 10 numerical changes at N150. You could have N150, 1, 52, 53, thank you, 54, 55, 55, 55, 55, 55, 55, 55. You don't, it does not have to run. It won't have a problem if it sees 17 G170s. It doesn't have to know which one to run. It would just sit there and spin, wouldn't it? Then th that's for you. The machine doesn't even need numbers. It doesn't need line numbers. Okay. That's so you can search through it. So if I say, hey, go to line... N35 and look at your work offset. That's for you and me. But like when I write programs, I don't line number because I don't need the line numbers. I, I, mean, I already know what I'm doing, so I don't, I don't need it in there. It's too cool for school. It's, it's additional time that the machine needs to read it. So it's milliseconds, but if it reads milliseconds over thousands of lines, over thousands of parts, I'm going to lose cycle time throughout time. So the only time I'm going to run line numbers for me is if I'm on a lathe roughing cycle and it needs a P and a Q or an N and N1 and 2 to start and stop my, my cycles. That's the only time I'm going to work it. Or if I'm going to run a main program, sub-program, where I've got to call back and forth between two programs. So, but these are for us. So that line numbers has nothing to do with the program. This like N55 where it has a T2 all by itself has nothing to do with anything. It tool two. only means put tool two in standby if standby is an option. Oh. The standby is only an option on what we call our double arms or our swing arms. It's not an option on our umbrellas. There's no, there's no standby tool available for that. Do, what, which ones do we, <clears throat> which machines have swing arms out there? The UMCs. Okay. So the UMCs have, um, have a swing arm or a double arm. And you'll see it when, if we were running this on the UMC, it would pull up tool five, because we re renamed that to be tool five. So it'll be running tool five, and then when it reads down here at tool two, it'll, you'll hear the carousel go grab tool two, and it'll bring it down and set it over here. So that when it's ready to change tools, it, it's already got them hanging down, and it just switches them. Then it starts this one here, and then it'll go put this one away and bring the next standby tool into place. Then that's why it does random tool placement. That's why it's doing random tool placement. So the carousel's not having to always go back to all these other things. It's just going, hey, here's an open hole. I'll put it in here. Here's an open hole. I'll put it in here. On the 30s or less, is not that big of a deal. But when you get to the horizontal, that's got 200, 400, 600. 
it really starts to matter there, you know. You want to make sure that those things matter. Um, okay, so H and T has to match. We don't have a problem renumbering tools. Um, work offsets, you just remember, you should have a work offset 54 through 59. Okay, yeah, G43. So G43 would be your tool offset. So think about it as G43H height. Okay, so when you go into your offsets and you've got, um, you hit offset two times, right, for the same thing. Um, so G43H1 um, is the call out of G43 height of height one. In the offsets, you hit offset and it goes back and forth between work offset or height offset. H is the height of it, D is in the diameter of it. So, why are we setting the height and the diameter up? When it's, it's calling that number that you put in. Um, when you put the height of it in off the presetter, you said the part was there, the tool was six inches long. It's recalling that out of the memory. So, it goes G43 and H, so it's H1, you're using tool one. And so when it reads down to G43, H1, it goes, apply the tool length to all of my math that I'm doing. So that's what the H, that's why we have to change H and T. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so all it's saying is um, you're going to call up tool one, and G43 is the height of tool one. Now I see why. I'm using H1. I see why on the back side we had to, because it's moving that uh, center drill around to chamber. Right? It does. That's why we had to go through the whole program and change those yesterday? Yeah, I don't remember if that was why we did that. But, um, yeah. So, go ahead. What's the difference between the G43 and the G40 or 54 through 59? Okay. So, G43 and H, your tool number, is only the height of the tool. Well, whatever tool it calls up, it goes to G43 to find the mathematical information? Yes, I got. Okay. So, and when I go here, whenever I put in my height for tool one, right. okay, so that's here, uh -huh. um, whenever it read this code, uh -huh. it goes H1, so it goes back over here to this page and goes, oh, five inches, okay. and then it applies it. So it applies it to whatever tool we called Whatever up. tool we called up. Okay. Okay. Um, that's awesome. So then what's the G54 through 59? That's your address on the table. On the table, of the part. Of the part location of the table, on the table. So you've got the whole map of the, you've got 20 by 40 on your table that you're going to use on a VF3. And it is going to be, so I can have 10 different parts on there if I want to. And then there, but just remember those are all going to be X's and Y's and the negative. It can be different offsets. Yeah, it can be so different offsets. So when I'm doing my edge finder, I'm putting it under G56 or whatever. I do my edge finder, correct? If we're running multiple, yes. uh, like if we're running 10 parts on it, say, do you have to touch off every one of those spots? Not unless you have a finder? stop. Well, so let's back up and make sure that we're talking about what, what we're doing. The work offset. So you have to touch off each work offset before you can run that part the first time? You're going to run 10 different programs? Yeah. Well, yeah. You have to touch off each one of them. Yeah. I mean, it won't know where it's at. Or if it had the program, it would all change the offset each time to this one then. Okay, so so what you're saying is you, you want to run a batch of 10 different parts mm -hmm. with 10 different offsets. Right. Absolutely. So you touch off each one, and then Absolutely. you hit cycle start, and the whole thing will just... All yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can even have one program called nine different programs with inside of that program and run nine different parts on your table. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be the same thing. So like lots of times in a main program sub program, it just says call program one, call program two, call program three. So like if let's just say we were building, it's like we used to build slack adjusters for Holodex. Mm -hmm. And so we would we would really be building the slack adjuster as it was going because it'd be machining all parts of it. And so when it would come off, we would have Part one, part two, part three, part four. So we're building the assemblies as we are yeah, building. Coming off of the machine. Okay. Yeah. 
And so oh. that way, if you had a problem, it was really cool because you could be like, oh, hold on. Something changed here, and you didn't end up running 6,000 of them and go, uh, all these tab tools are too short. You were putting them together as you went. So, okay. yeah. I was just making sure that that's what's in my head. Totally. Of EC4 through 59, I can run nine different, or whatever, there's six different parts yep. on that machine in different spots. Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick time out. Um, I've got um, Mark Mason here from Maytool. Um, May Tools in Kansas City, they make stuff for Boeing and uh, like they have a, this place, it's right on the highway as you go up to like the airport. It's huge. I mean, they got machines. It depends on what side of the road you're on. Okay. If, if you're on the airport, it's on the right side. Okay. Yeah. Sort of You'll know it because it says May Technology. Side. So, yeah. Are they aviation? Are they aviation engineers? Um, they're just a machine shop. He'll he'll be able to tell you better about it than I would. He works there, um, and so um, but he's going to talk to us. Um, so they, they actually own Sedalia Tool here in Sedalia, and and so he's going to um, he's going to talk to you guys. They're looking to recruit some people. Are they coming in here? Or are we doing? It's going to come in here in just a moment. I'm going to have him come in here. I'm going to go grab the guys out there. Okay. So you stay planted. Um, <laughs> Uji didn't bring me any coffee, so I got to go get my own. So, yeah. I got soda and I got box if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> like, he needs more caffeine. Yeah, you need downers, dude. That's, yeah. I'm going to leave. Take my value if you want, but then yeah. I can't go in the no. shop. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got a, we got a limit. So you can have 50 gram, milligrams of caffeine until 11 o'clock. I don't use it. So um, I, can't, I can't function with that. I'm going to go grab those guys, get them in here. I'm going to leave the camera on just so we can have May recorded while they're here. So um, anyways, let me go grab them and then we will um, we'll get started with that. Keep your sweaty hands 24-7. It makes a whole lot more sense than what it did yesterday. I didn't sweat. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Well, it was just like yesterday. Instead of putting, like whenever I was doing the center, with the tuck inside, well, I put an edge bound. Some kid ran my hundreds off, one hundred thousands off. Well, you ran. Then I subtracted the point seven five for the size of this way. But I forgot it was only three. It's three inches this way. Before I took point seven five off this way. So we ran everything perfectly. Lock nut for the right side. After he took the thing. And then I was like, oh crap! That's an inch and a half, not. Well, and that comes from being yeah. Russian and not yeah. thinking about it exactly. and all that kind of stuff. Well, I, would I, I ran my part and didn't. <laughs> I don't know if Justin knows yet. The second we hit the tool, I was cutting out the center. Yeah. So that he was cutting off to the right because I was only at negative 75. You know what he did? He was all upset. I was like, dude, it's okay. Yeah, my whole tool was off to one inch, so. Oh God, there's so many people that have touched these mics. So, so that, like, I've got two of them are that are messed up on one side that I'd like to turn them over. And like, people drop them. Yeah. Right. I can put you a good You just have to test your Z again. Well, I don't want to break it. You have to test your Z again. Because your Z is going to be height difference because you just ran that part on the other side. That is. Yeah, but the left and right's going to move too. No. 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 What? No, 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 no. Uh, I've got. Did you send me more Snapchat? So I want to put them in there. Yeah, on the back side and just try it. You can put it on the side if you want. And then if I get it right, I want to be able to put it on the side. That's what he's he talking about, like, whenever you build a uh, crate part here. Or you can just put the part in and push it to the side and then edge find it knows exactly where it's at each time. But it's in a fixture. You know what I mean? Okay. This is my part. Right. You flip that out, right? See, there's X, Y. I'm going to put that up against that fixture. You can run the same part over and over and over. Right. I'll pull it out, put it in. The X Y would be the same no matter what because you have a fixture setting a 2 X, Y that you've already preset. So you can, you can run the same part? I have a clamp like this that I put a part in, and it can go this way. Yeah, but if you have a fixture in there to where it can't go anywhere else. Well, that's what I'm saying. We don't have a fixture. No, not right now we don't. But yeah. when we start on snowman, you'll see it. So we'll the snowman, we'll literally just put a piece of metal in there. Well, that's what I want. Those, out. Yes. What is the those vice box out that? there? So, so the five-axis machines, those big old machines that you work that are behind you, 
they have like uh, numbers on the vise, so you can set it exactly square every single time. So you can run the same part over and over. It's a vise block, so you put the part in the same spot. Every time. They're auto sent. They have like uh, what's it called? What's it called the different block? Yeah, what, no, what's the other vise in there called? The auto centering vise. Magnetic one. I don't remember what it's called. Air vise. Might be it. The air vice, yes, but it's a different kind of name. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. Either. There's probably a name to it, I just don't know. There's a name to it. I just don't remember the name. I don't remember it. So whatever crackers we had out there, like by four o'clock last night, my toe. <laughs> I was like, nope, I'm gonna eat these. Well I had left over and I'll put a few things in Yeah, I know, I found them. <laughs> I bought these last night. <laughs> well, I, I got the picture. He came home with this huge box full. He goes, "Guys, like munchies." I said, "Okay, I don't need any of that stuff." When I come home, I said, "You don't know how many vices they've undone for me, and how many, you know, clamps and chucks and all that good stuff." Have you guys been uh, take, uh, taking your vices and unscrewing them from the table every day? Every day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, hey man, I got my vice set and I got uh, my work on my Z done so far, so I'm ready. Already this morning? Yeah, and I got my edge finder in my chuck. I'm ready, to, and it's in my spindle. I'm ready. I'm getting ready. To run this <laughs> well, are you finally doing better? Oh my God, do I want to die? Mm. <sighs> you got a new lady while well, Justin's gone. Yeah. Better. Yeah, I'm behind if I don't pass. If you guys see me drop out like before, <laughs> you know why. I'll be back. I'll be back. I thought you had ten, ten weeks of this already. He's worked. I'll be back. You're okay. almost 16 weeks. You don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it right the first yeah, yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, I know, but if it happens, if it happens. That's why. That's my thought about it. I got to. My stepdad, he told me, he's like, there's no way that he didn't get through college in two years. He said that he failed the class. Oh, I just it happens. Right. I just drop it take does, that. but you don't want it to. If you I don't want it to. I'm trying to keep it from happening. But it's like he said to Justin yesterday. Eric can go out here and yeah. show him twice and he can do it. Yeah. But he can't do it that way because he's not a he's book and visual learner. I'm a main visual. I have to see it to figure it out. Well, see, John and I looked at each other the other day and said, one gun does not work. I have to write it down. I have to have it in front of me. I haven't wrote down shit. They, well, and I don't have the memory, so I can't do that. I don't know why. I, can, I just when it was twice, I'll figure it out. No, it's if you tell it to me, and it'll fall out my left ear as soon as you do the right. And ninety percent of the people in here are ADHD or, or at least hyperactive. <laughs> Not me. No. No. no I have an adverse effect on sugar. You 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 graduate next semester? No. You graduate next semester? Is that the end of the semester? Sixteen. Well, you very little, and I've been doing it more than usual, which doesn't help me. But yeah, yeah. But, but he said, I noticed everybody was kind of paper, except for the one guy. He was just standing there quietly. I said, oh, that's Hunter. <laughs> Where did our other guy go? Oh, you do drop? I haven't seen him in like two days. John. John? Gone someplace, I think. John went to Jamaica for vacation. Okay. You went to Jamaica on vacation? Yeah. How's he gonna pass his damn class if he ain't here? I have no clue how he's you only got like two parts done. He's on the way, and that's it. Yeah. So I was wondering where the hell John been. I have, have almost people. all of my lathe parts done. I just got yeah, a couple of metric parts done. Just yeah. but the metric parts are easy. Just switch it to metric, type in the numbers that you need, switch from the micrometer to a freaking metric and go or yeah. I did the first time and then I sent Justin a message. I left and forgot to turn my machine off, and I forgot to set it back to. I did the same thing. I did turn it off and left it on millimeters. Oh, he, he changed it for me. I called him the other night. I left my USB in the machine. Can you grab it for me? Did <laughs> you ever grab it for me? Yeah. Is it in your toolbox? Should be in your toolbox. If not, it's going to be in my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because. <laughs> now you're like, crap, what did I do with that? You yeah. <laughs> have it somewhere. Huh? We might. Uh, the only thing positive.
Tim, we lost. I'm like right at three. 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 Yeah, oh, good. Good. John is not going to be able to catch up. He needs to. He's got five kids. He's not going to be able to. I put him on this. Um, Preteen that he doesn't have a clue. Here. Here, let me just pull it off of the window. Light warning that he went over a lot of stuff, too. Yeah. That day, certainly after he was gone that day. And he does, he's got one part right on his leg. Good. Really? Yeah. I thought he told me he had all these parts done on the way. I got. I haven't seen any rocket from him anywhere. I got six parts made the letters on it, but the other three are the hardest ones. Patrick's flip around. Flip around one on the rocket as well. Oh. Oh, the one that. I got it made. I if can I can make it. get to the like that far from the spindle and you freak the fuck out? Freak out? Yeah. I did. I did that cycle stop and fall as soon as possible. That ain't going to spindle. Um, so I've learned to function. I'm going to come hide over here. Hide over here. Uh, that's what he was saying. It's the same. I mean, that one gal who was over here, like, they do a lot. She just doesn't know to take pictures. Yeah. yeah. But like, my phone, yeah, I'm going to send that to charge it for me to be able to tap it. Yeah. I literally didn't go to school. Like, I forgot what I mean. Breakfast came in this morning. It was completely, it was just me. Uh, did you find out of this today? Yeah. Damn, I know. I got to exchange these gloves. Horrible. Barely ever. I tried to change the clothes I want to get. Yeah. I'll go at uh, early for this one. You can get that part around. I have almost everything. I just got to touch off my line X. I'm on part Then I can run that part once I put my tools inside. I'm on part three. I'm on part one, but it's okay. I don't even know what part one is on part two. I can see. Let's start drawing. Oh, dear God, we're making a 3 2 1 box. Yeah, man, Call of Duty and stuff. I don't know how I'm good, but thank you. My PC can't even run. Yeah, run. Call of Duty 2.0. Yeah, you can't even run Fortnite. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to play Fortnite, but it just won't run. It won't run Fortnite. Because I play PC. Oh, at least. No. My PC. My PC, it's having trouble. I don't know what it is. Oh. Yeah, you have. I think I don't have enough RAM. Your PC is playing. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. I, I know. I'm just putting it out there. I'm and they just couldn't run it out. Dude, I can't. I think it's my RAM. I have one stick of eight gigabyte RAM. One stick of eight because gigabyte. I bought it. It was a pre-built. I bought it. Well, and you buy another stick. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't. The other that stick blows anyway, so I'm just gonna buy two. Go buy two sticks. That's what I think is going with it. And then the next thing is gonna be the graphics card. It's like sixty dollars. Just go ahead and get two sticks. Yeah, but the graphics stuff. card is bad it's too. Be able to work. Like Sixteen gigs of like thirty-six hundred megahertz. Are you, are you rising or into? I probably have to leave Maxion, which I don't know if that'd probably ruin my. I already start making no, it. Okay. Then the speed, then speed doesn't really matter. Yeah. No, all my stuff is speed. It's 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 not in real. They were gonna put you. I've got a four. So it's it's, it's AMD. I did not notice that. I got a fourteen. Uh, RTX fifty five hundred is my the graphics card, and that thing. And their That's horrible. Where's my graphics? It said it's good for games that are like. Like the newer games out, they have like decent else graphics, but it's completely capable of running things like 1080p and decent PS, yeah, like 60 to 70. Well, it should like be the biggest games. Games. I would just change out your RAM until it happens. Yeah, and then if not, I'm just going to go ahead and get my. I'm going to start building another one. <laughs> not even. Yeah, I'm running an 8K you know what processor. Your processor you have? It's a good processor. I have a good, but the GPU is bad. Yeah, the CPU is good, but the GPU is bad. I can't remember what the CPU has. I need, to, I need to use Google Translate. Bro. Where's your RAM? There it is. Georgia. <laughs> 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 
I made sure my work and my other classes around here would accept the degree before I actually did it. Two gigs. Oh, yeah. Go the rest. <laughs> Yeah, that's why yours runs a lot better than mine. <laughs> mine has eight. <laughs> it not run. I got a Ryzen 9 5900X or 60 Ti. Run two gigs of RAM. I guarantee this thing runs better than that. Uh huh. Yeah. How many RAM? How many gigs? Thirty-two processors. Oh, it's like a, it's an eight core. It's running at one hundred fifty-three. You're not going to overclock my GPU or my RAM. Yeah, pretty much anything's overclocked. You can overclock your screen. I can overclock it just with a push of a button. Yeah. You can I have an overclock, but I don't think that you've got a uh, you've got an Intel though. I don't you overclock my stuff. Intel i7. What's your Ryzen? Ryzen five. Ryzen nine fifty nine hundred. Ryzen Ryzen five. Um, you have a Ryzen five. Thirty six hundred. I didn't get Brett get the job. At, uh, um, All right, I have good CPUs, and I was and I was looking into my CPUs at like twenty five percent. That we have currently in this classroom right now. <laughs> so, uh, but the, yeah, so these are anything from high school students to college students. We have a high school program that is earning um, college dual credit at the same time. So these okay. guys, if they choose to move over to college side, they're halfway down when they get started. Uh, um, okay. And then that's free dual credit for them as well. So this is Mark Mason. And he is from May Technology, and they're in Kansas City. They're, he has promised everybody $75 an hour right. and no work, work from home. All you got to do is just jump in his car with him on the way back. On my way. <laughs> yeah. already, like, I got I'm a backpack. Back. I got my laptop. We're good to go. So if you give him your attention, um, we'll go through... Um, he, he can explain what they do and, right. and who they are and, and there's a little bit of their history. And, um, and so there will be a 700 question quiz <laughs> after he leaves. Oh, okay. Okay, so, set up on the yeah. laptop right there. 425 points. Okay. Good morning, everybody. So, uh, as Justin said, I'm, my name is Mark Mason. I work at uh, May Technology and Manufacturing. We are a 3, 4, and 5 axis aerospace machining facility. We've, uh, well, let's, let's see, how do I get this? Oh, I'll screw this up for sure. <laughs> um, glasses, glasses. Is it doing anything? Oh. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's going to help. Oh, whoops. <laughs> You're going to have to probably drive that thing. Okay. Great. So, we've been in business since 1964. Uh, we are a small family-owned business. We are a designate, designated small business. We're not in a HUD zone or anything like that. Uh, but be because what you have to do is hire 50% of your employees from the area surrounding. And we have employees that come all over the place. I mean, we have uh, one gentleman who lives down in Archie, Missouri, and he drives, you know, Two hours almost each way. It's it's incredible, but he likes to do it. But uh, the the company was founded. So the owners today are two brothers, Steve and Reno May. Uh, Reno is not his real name. His his real name is Reinhold because they couldn't be any more German. Their their dad and mother came over to the United States after World War II. Their their dad was a mold maker in Romania. And somehow had a friend here in Kansas City, and he was able to make his way here. He went to work in downtown Kansas City at, at uh, Best Tool, uh, which is not no longer there. But he did that for a few years, decided to go up, met his wife, their mother, uh, who came over from Germany proper. And uh, he started his own shop literally in a little room in the back of their house. It's one of those stories that you just go, really? And... Uh, so when you come into our building, you go right into the, uh, uh, the lobby, there's a museum there that Steve and Reno have preserved uh, of their very first shop, and they've kept all of his original equipment in there, all the way down to the telephone, uh, our old rotary telephone that their mother used to take orders and things from. And it, it's really, it, the customers love that. They, they love seeing that history. And everything still works, you know, miraculously. But anyway, 
Okay, well, we'll just go through. The, and I want this to be interactive, so stop me. with what a rotary phone is. Okay, you guys are awesome. Oh, yeah, man. I, was like, I bet they don't wow. know it all. <laughs> I'm impressed if that many people really know. I know, yeah. Yeah, who's reading? Yeah. Yeah. Who's ever yeah. used a row? Really? Okay. Golly, man, you guys are classics, right? They are. <laughs> so we've expanded our facility over the years several times, and now it's about 115,000 square feet. We sit way up on a hill. We're still in Kansas City, Missouri proper, but we butt right up next to Independence. From the top and on the back, right here, if you're looking that way, you can see Arrowhead and Kauffman Stadiums. We're in the Blue Valley industrial area, right off of Interstate 70. So that's, that's the location. Um, anyway, very state of the art. Thank you, Rochelle. Mm -hmm. I won't read all this to you, but um, like I said, 90% of our work is done uh, on aerospace. Those are our main customers. That's one side. And we do uh, not only, comp uh, you know, as I mentioned, machined components, very highly precision, but they go on airplanes. I mean, we're not making stuff that goes on, you know, uh, anything they build at Worlds of Fun. Not that that's not important, too. It is, but we make, we make uh, uh, structural components that go on the manufacture of, of uh, Boeing 737s and 787s. We also do quite a bit of defense work for the big defense original equipment manufacturers like Lockheed Martin and uh, Northrop Grumman. So we make, we make machined components that go on weapons, uh, missiles and so on, things like that. But uh, anyway, yeah, go ahead, get to the picture show, which is way more. So we have about 100 employees, just, just over 100 employees now. Uh, this is the inside of our newer expansion shop, and we run everything from Mazaks to Makinos, OKKs, uh, mostly Mazaks, Makinos. This big, ugly machine right back there is a five-axis profiler. That thing manufactures huge bulkheads, big, big parts. It is truly one-and-done manufacturing. The head goes up underneath and on top and side, things like that. Very, very high speed. There are only four of those machines in the United States. And little bitty May Technology's got one of them. How about that? <laughs> We, have a, we run a very, very clean shop. We're proud of that. Um, when you walk through there, especially if customers walk through there, um, that's what they like to see. You know, we're always on the lookout for odd foreign object debris, which causes foreign object damage uh, because of the industry we're in. Uh, FOD is a big, big, big deal, and we're always on the lookout for it. Okay. I'll stand up here. Just, I'm just going to run through these pictures a little bit. A little bit more of our shop. It's kind of hard to get a span of yeah, all those machines, machines are. are. Right, yeah. Right. Look at the toolboxes. Yeah, it's yeah. going to say, look at the 55 gallon drums and the toolboxes right. around them. I mean, we they're about them. three to four times yeah. taller than a 55 gallon drum. 80% of our work, uh, we don't do anything. Everything is, is a hog out for the most part. We don't do any, uh, we don't have any design engineers. We have manufacturing engineers that help, you know, with a customer's design sometimes, but we don't actually design anything from the ground up. Eighty percent of our work comes in in great big billet like this, aluminum, but these OKK machines, those are hard metals, so we run steel, titanium, ink canal, those types of things on that, on those machines in particular. And were those, what size were those, 600s, 800s? Those were 800s. So I was looking at some of the parts you have out there on your uh, table. These are some of the small parts that we manufacture now. We do the very same thing. And this is just miscellaneous small parts, uh, all kinds of things. If you ask me what's that, I would say I have no idea. <laughs> so that is, a, uh, that is some type of a hatch cover for the Gulfstream 650, a big high-end business jet. Uh, we make quite a few parts for, for uh, that particular customer. That is an engine casing on a Sikorsky helicopter. These are auxiliary wing ribs for the Boeing 787. A lot of people say, 
What do you mean wing ribs? That that's inside of a wing. It cer certainly is. There's several of them. You know, you got it's got to be rigid, but it also has to, they they flex a little bit. Not these parts. But we manufacture those right in house. So I think not only are they machining large parts like that, but inspection wise, they're CMM arms, yep. panning, those types of things like that. Yep. We have Romer arms. We have full blown CMMs, and uh, we have about ten. For a small company, we have, t you know, quality, you, you always hear about that. You've heard quality is job one from Ford. In the aircraft business, quality is, is job one. It has to be. So we have about 10 uh, inspectors, very skilled individuals. They all know how to run CMMs. Even if, they, even if a person has only done things with calipers and gauges, we'll, we'll train them on how to, how to run a CMM. That's just uh, that's an F-16 part. That's part of the rear stabilizer. We make quite a bit of stuff for Boeing St. Louis. That's just a, uh, a rib. Uh, I don't know what that's from that particular one. Oh, it's that thing, 25 inch. Yeah. The other side of our business, we do tooling and ground support equipment. Those are tool and die makers. And uh, although uh, you guys would know that uh, tool and die makers don't like to be called tool and die makers. I don't know why that is, but we have uh, we have some guys back there that have been with us for 40 years. They are incredibly talented craftsmen, and we make everything back there. All kinds of test stands, and uh, th th this is a base to some type of a of a unit. Uh, and, and they 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 can make anything back there, and they mostly have three little three axis hoss machines back there is what they use back there and we make everything in house so these are just see that is a uh, those are hard metal parts those are made out of steel those are bell cranks so those are for a big c5 uh, aircraft and this is for the the uh, cargo door that pivots pivots on those big bell, bell cranks right there we make quite a few of those We also do a lot of mill turn stuff. Those are parts for the U.S. Navy. Those are tie down structures for aircraft carriers. Those are really heavy. They got to be. They screw down to the floor of the of the of the ship, and they uh, help hold aircraft. So that's a little bell crank for a Boeing 737 door. We also do a little, a little bit of tabletop assembly over there in tooling. They make a lot of gauges and test rigs and things like that. I, I say we make it. They most of that stuff they order the parts and then they put them together over there. You know, I'll show you what I mean. I have no idea. What it is. <laughs> and I asked several of our machining managers. I said, "What is that?" They went, uh, "Matic gripper." <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you could say anything you wanted to, honestly. Okay, I never know. You can be like, that's the thing that invented Twinkies. And people would be like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, we, we manufacture, we have one welder on our staff, uh, Austin May, and he is Reno's son. He is probably the most talented welder I've ever seen in my life. I mean, MIG, tin, everything. And uh, I'm surprised somebody hasn't snapped him up, but since his last name is May, it's not allowed. He can't just say <laughs> So, that, so we, these, are, these are testing machines that, that they do when they're doing maintenance and overhaul on aircraft. So they're checking hydraulics, pneumatics, stuff like that. We don't make anything there. Again, we get orders from Boeing or these other big customers that do, or just out in the field, uh, customers that do work for, uh, for those people. And they want us to, they give us money to, Put this stuff in and put it together for them, and they could just buy it already. I don't know. It's it's, 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 a, it's a good gig. It's a yeah. Good gig. There's some more of them. Those are uh, those are water. That's a spout to come in that you, you somehow you put the water comes out of this thing. And this cleans the inside of aircraft engine components. They, that's the, they, they hose everything down at certain intervals uh, during maintenance. 
But anyway, that, that's, that's my dog and pony show, just real short and sweet. But, you know, everybody, we are like, you know, Kansas City is not a big aerospace hub like it is in some other cities surrounding us. But we have some really top shops there. And we're all competing against each other trying to find talent right now. It's really, really difficult. Part of it is you've heard about the great resignation and you've heard about you know, the pandemic has, has, has had some effect on that. But we're needing three, four, and five access machinists right now. And it, it's, you know, if somebody comes walking through the door with 25, I just recently hired a guy well, he's been with us six months, so uh, I got a call out of nowhere, and uh, he and his family had just moved to Kansas City from New York City. And he goes, I heard about your shop. I heard you guys do good work. Um, you know, I, I do five-axis machining. I do my own setups. Uh, here are the shops I worked at. Here's my resume. Could I come over and talk to you? I said, yeah, come and talk to us. Okay, he's turned out to be our best guy. And it was just handed to me. You know, so that, ha that very rare does that happen. But we're also looking for people, if you've got a good attitude, and you can come to work every day on time, and, you, and you're willing to learn. I mean, you're learning here. If you're willing to take what you have here, work with an experienced guy that's been there 30 years as a mentor, they'll show you other things as well. But we'd like to talk to you. And I'm, I've got my cards up here. I'll leave them. Whenever you guys are done, if you're if anybody's got a burning desire to move to Kansas City, and you can look over and almost see the Chiefs play, um, you know, give me a call. Better yet, why don't you are all invited, all of you, to come to our shop one day, take a tour. Yeah, we'd love to come do that. Come on in. Yeah, we'll show you. We'll show you what we do. We want to see this. And uh, you'll cool. we'll look at some really cool parts, and you can kind of see the type of thing that you know. You might want to make a career out of it. You're obviously here for some reason. So uh, we also work with a lot of high schools um, that have, have curriculums somewhat, somewhat like you do. And we've hired a couple of pretty good high school students right out of, right out of uh, you know, their senior year that had just, for whatever reason, had no desire to, to go on to a community college or couldn't, which is more accurate. And uh, they turned out to be really good employees. So. Anyway, that's what I do. Mark has a table out in the lobby. Um, so if you guys on break or anytime yeah. want to go out there and talk more one-on-one, -on -one, ask questions. Coffee cups and some pens. And there's some brochures about our, our company there. You can take with you and things like that. Any questions for him when he's here? Danny in front of you. Okay. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely, thank what you. A building. I am so impressed. I, <laughs> thank you. Can I take a picture? Like you, a, absolutely. I, you can take as yeah as Steve much as often. Like well, yeah. They knew. They know about your program here. Really? Yes. Yes. And uh, but I don't think they've seen. They don't get down over to. Uh, no, yeah. To Rod's shop yeah. too <laughs> yeah. often. Anymore, although they yeah. own it. So, but, yeah. Yeah, last time I talked to him, uh, yeah, I, I asked him, I said, hey, well, so, so uh, when's the last time Teresa came down here? He's like, oh, he's oh, like, my oh, gosh, he's like, I couldn't tell you when she's been down here. They're so. the one, I guess, Teresa and Ernie, their dad, yeah. they're the ones who originally yeah. bought that, I think, I think the building, I don't know what it was, that was yeah. years and years ago. Yeah. But they don't do any aerospace machining over there. They, they make, they manufacture, I think they make some parts for Budweiser. I think they make some parts for rest the restaurant industry. They, they machine stuff, but it's not what, what we do. Yeah. So May Tool owns Sedalia Tool. Yeah. Uh, May Technology owns Sedalia Tool here in Sedalia as well. Right. Uh, Sedalia Tool does a lot of things for Subway, um, which would be through Duke Manufacturing, um, and then some other things. But they're, they do a couple of stuff for... Yeah, yeah. they do some stuff from Axion. They're a local job shop. And uh, run by some really good guys. Uh, Rodney Walters is their yeah. uh, plant manager. So uh, does a really good job. Small shop. Got a little EDM. Got a couple of live tool machines. Right. Good, little, good little place. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we will definitely set something up. And so if you guys want to yeah. take a trip up there, we'll, we'll definitely yeah. work it out. If you want to come as a group, fine. If you want to come individually, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll accommodate. So. 
Anyway, I'll be up front, guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Sure. Thank you, Rochelle. Of course. Absolutely. I just threw that off on That's his uh, desktop. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much oh, for being here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. These guys, when they get done with uh, class, they will uh, come out and um, talk to you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep, we'll get done here and then I'll give Perfect. them a break and they can we yeah, should yeah, chop yeah. them up and sell it. Talking. Great. Great. Out on the black market. Yeah. Like Jeffrey Don't you know much we can get out of you. Yeah, like on the, make all the Such thing as having too many business cars. No, there really isn't. My oldest four. Just chop them up. Yeah. Yeah. Sell, sell their organs. For like, sell, you want one? Sell their organs to like really rich Chinese men that are about to die. <laughs> Okay, let's take a quick let's let's wrap up on um, the stuff that we're working on, gentlemen. If you would, Kate, uh, not that we don't like you. Um, yeah, I'm not kicking you out. You just can't be in here. Um, all right, so we've got this program. Let's jump back into um, one of our other ones here. Let me spin back around. Three, two, one, block for part three. That those machines. Three, two, one block on part three. Megan. Three, two, one block on part three. For part three. For part three. Um, I don't know. Let's look at it. Those machines oh, in that picture. Like that. I was just wondering. I've got to be at least. So uh, um, a five gallon drum is three and a half feet. Yeah, that thing's probably. So it's got to be at least like twelve feet tall, or almost uh, twenty feet tall with the spindle going one, up into it. Two. It looked like, yeah, that, those things were huge. Those things were awesome. I want to see that big mill or whatever you call it. The one that there's only yeah. four of them in America? Yeah, yeah I want to go see that one. If I had some orange lights on it or something. Uh, it's futuristic. Cheap, futuristic, man. It's freezing in here. I think it feels good in it. Non internal one. Or an external one. Um, which one did you guys that bring come up? Two or three? I wanted to see three. Okay. Nobody else is there yet. <laughs> I got one. Let me grab, let me just grab you one. He needs one. to keep his. I got mine in my toolbox, man. Right, but that's yours. <laughs> you can what? <laughs> he needs a thread. Threading tool. Oh, oh you don't have a threading tool? Oh, well. Wow. Throwing money? Dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing money around, huh? Yeah. Big spender now. Strip club. What's going on? <laughs> Notice I can't read half this. You're behind on your work, huh? <laughs> I can't read half this damn thing. Look all this money I'm getting. Okay. We're still doing about being on All right, so um, this is. So much clearer than mine. What? You're so much clearer on. Did you download it? No, but I'm just. Download it. I can't barely read it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show you the part itself. Yeah. That's a three to one block, right? Okay. So this block is two point five long. It is inch and a half by inch and a half square stock. Okay. So um one So here we have this part is called our G ninety one exercise block, and I'll explain to you why. Um what happens is generally you are working from the X and Y location. But what this does is inside of it, it actually goes to incremental. So whether instead of going, um, so let's just say every hole is um, 475 thousandths apart from each other, because they are. Uh, instead of going 475 and then 950 and then continuing to add from there, it's going into a G91, which is incremental. So every move just goes X 0.475, X 0.475, X 0.475, X 0.475. Y minus 0.475, Y minus 0.475. And so after it's done with that, then it jumps back into G90, which does absolute from the work offset. So incremental means that it goes, um, it changes its current location to zero. It's, so think about leapfrog. Okay, so it goes, um, here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm going. Now this is zero. Here's where I'm going. Now this is zero. Here's where I'm going. Now this is zero. Where absolute goes. Every time or? Has nothing to do with offset, okay. just incremental movements. This one goes, here's where I started from, 
now here's where I've stepped, now here's where I've stepped, now here's where I've stepped, always staying in with this same location. Switch between the two during the program? Switch between the two. Are so um, this yeah, yeah kinda. Uh, yeah. So um, this is a broken parts holder. Um, so yeah, and now in this one, um, it is it's about an inch, almost an inch and a half of drilling. You want to make sure that your drills are good and sharp because this is a long, deep hole and there's not much material between the two of them. If you have a drill, if you grab the wrong drill, if you grab a dull drill, um, then you're, I'm going to know it really quickly because these walls are thin enough that they start to swell out and push stuff around. Okay, or they so. look like an egg. Or they look like an egg. Yeah. My question, when I go to get a, a drill bit, and some of them look like they've been chewed on, yes. and that's the only one there is, what do you do? Right. Sharpen them. Oh my gosh. Are you ready to learn how to sharpen Yeah, it? no. It's a fun thing to learn. No, it's not. It I didn't even I do, do it. it. I skipped it. For the first half I skipped it. My 101. I <laughs> passed without it because I didn't know how to do it. It's a distinct it's feeling I should have taken 101 first. <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do, do you go back to 101 yeah, or yeah. are you taking it different? Yeah, I mean, there's just two oh, different. Really? Okay, this is inch and a half by inch and a half by two and a half. Uh, X zero, Y zero is in the center of the part. Z zero is on the top of the part. You're going to use tool one as a three inch shell mill. You'll move it to what? Five or, wait, we got four part, three, one, two, three parts. So we'll move it to four. It could go. You can move I'm it to two. Move if there's an empty spot, you can do two, three, four, or five. If you well, so look at what's on there though. You got one, two, and four, three inch shell mill. Oh, oh we can move it to three. Yeah. Right, three is an empty pocket. Okay, so it's a great spot. You can move it to five, you can move it to three, you can move it to 10. It doesn't uh, make a I mean, difference. You're gonna just move it there anyway. Only okay. thing you need to know is when you do this, go back you gotta go T, whatever. If you wanna make it really simple, whatever change it to tool 10, all you gotta do is put a zero behind it. Okay, so then on your G43 line, make it H10. H10 or whatever pod you're in. What's your work offset for this program? Work offset? Um, can you scroll up? I can't see. I don't need to scroll up. It's on here, like right here. I don't. It's on there. Uh, G43. No. No, G43 is the height. That's the height. G55. G43 is the height. G0. G55. There it is. Found it. You got your G55 right there. Must not. The G55, so you're just looking through. Generally, um, the, it's going to be about at the time when it starts to move to the part. Okay, that's where, like, when you start to look at the program, you should start to see it. It's going to call the work offset before or on the same line as it moves to a position. Okay. So, um, again, this has a tool two, standby tool. It's insignificant for the things that we're doing. So the only thing on you got to do on this one is make sure that you're changing those things. Okay, so um, you're, you hear you're using a half inch carbide five flute end mill. That's going to be an end mill that you're going to want to grab from me. Um, I will have those available for you guys whenever you're. Um, uh, <laughs> your, My goodness. Okay, what if you're gone? I, I will. I will have. They will be able to get in there. The other guys will be able to get in there for them. I'll have them. I'll have those end mills laid out so that you guys can get to them. Yeah, if not, Parker. Yeah, I don't understand why mine looks the way it does on my laptop. Oh man! Like literally half the letters are gone. That's why I couldn't find the N thirty-five. Okay. So, what questions do you have about parts that we've done up to this part? Oh man! I don't why do we have to change so much on part two too? Okay, on part two, okay, um, the second side of part two, so let's just see, let's look at the first part of it. First part, all you got to change is T whatever to whatever and H to whatever, whatever. And I'm still offset for some reason, I did something.
power to you all of a sudden. Eyes started stinging, nose started tickling, you know. Oh. Did I change T1 to T4 and H to H4? But then you, we had to go down through the whole program and change something. Okay. So on this tool, um, it uses cutter compensation. The cutter compensation will be on the same line as G41. So down here, it's line 310. It says G1, G41, that turns cutter compensation on, and then the D1. And if D1 is not changed, it'll still say H and T doesn't match. Okay, and it'll be like, so it's think really H, T, and D, even though it just says H and T. So it's the diameter of your tool. And so there's two ways to, to set up a tool. You can either set it by the diameter, that's how I've had you setting it. On this particular program, when you try to run it at, so it's doing the keyway inside of it, it's kind of doing a pocket, okay? It's not going to run the tool. And so what it's gonna say is tool is too large. So sometimes when you run a tool in a cam system especially, if the pocket is tight for the area, let's just say you're making a 550 um, keyway and the end mill is a half inch. The tool doesn't have enough room to go inside of it to move its radius and then shift over. So what you do is you, you shift it into what's called wear. So when you do that, so if you get one that says tool too big and you know you've got the diameter in, so you're like, hey, I know I'm using a half inch end mill, but it says tool too big, go in, change that diameter to zero. Because what it's saying is that it's got, the tool has to be able to move the radius in order to kick cutter compensation on. But if you do it by wear, it makes much smaller movements. And so you don't have to have that, okay? So those will be your, that's kind of your clue. When you put in all your tools right, and it says tool too big, then you should be like, oh, I need to change that to zero. All good though for the mine, like, from what I can tell. Change diameter to zero. Zero, and what about where? It, that's, that's how you do it. It's, it's, it's in. I know there's a section on where. Mm, not the same section. So when we're programming it, uh -huh. we program it in, in what's called where, not where on the machine. Okay. Oh, I know there's a, a, a title that says where. Title that says where. That's for end mill wearing. So you can, you can as your end mill adjust, wears down, you can adjust it for it. That's not the same thing. That's for on like job one, shops. On this one, it was the, the uh, I just lost my whole train of thought. <laughs> um, Too much monster. No, it's not the what brain it is. So, when you see tool too big, you, you should go, oh, I've either got, I've either set it to zero, I've set it to the wrong diameter, or I've set it to the diameter, and so you're going to flip to the next thing. So, so, if you flipped it to the diameter, half inch ML, and it says tool too big, you're going to flip it to zero. And so, then it'll still comp by that, so if, you're, if your slot's too small, and it needs to go 10 thousandths bigger, you're gonna go, you just change it by 10 thousandths on there. We haven't got to changing comps yet, so I'm not worried That's about that. That's why you yet. mean Mark Electric Bar going. Right, forward. yeah, so yeah, and then you're, you're kind of just doing this. I'm not sure how to fix the car, so I'm just gonna start throwing parts at it, and then you end up That's going. I have three done. I've got the serpentine belt on backwards, and the tire where the steering wheel should be, why isn't my spot drill working? And I'm like, Let's go back and fix all the other things that got screwed up and then fix that thing. That's why we had to make sure the diameter was right on the spot drill because it did the chamfer, I guess, right? No. No. Okay. Um, you um, always want to apply the right diameters to the right tools so they'll do the right things. Right. Think always putting in length and diameter. Always putting in length and what diameter. It means it, when you don't need to worry about diameter is like if it's like that little numbers on the moon, but whenever you're you go into a negative diameter, your thing's going to miss the, the part. It's just going to completely go negative. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, diameters in the machine should be positive numbers. Yeah. Here should be the clue for it. If you go up to a machine and you put in a number that doesn't look like anything else that's in there, that should be a red light. Like if, it's, if it says 375, 475, 
half inch, quarter inch, and you enter in negative 375, and you're like, gosh, the one I put in is the only one that's negative. All the others must be wrong. Or Probably not the, true. Or the spindle's in five and not yeah. where it's supposed so, to be when you start. So, but again, those are about making sure that your first steps are right. But you, you've got to start with the training wheels. And so you want to start with the training wheel motions first. Then we're going to, we're just going to start taking the wheels off as we go. Okay. So there, there is a, there is a method to it. Okay. So, um, yeah, you can change around the tools however you want. We're just going to make sure we avoid tool one. Everything other than that is good. Um, I really want to try to break away the, the uh, idea of tools running in a numerical order because they just, they've, they've become, they've be, in, in this situation, they've become a problem. You want right. me to stagger mine? I can do that. I know. Um, but, but what I'm going to start doing is uh, when I start outputting programs, I'm going to start doing them by like 14, 12, 6, 8, you know, so that they can. I guess want to die. Yeah, I want you to have more problems with them as you go. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that. Uh, you want us to have, yeah. you want us to, have to hit 16. Yeah, you know, I made sure yesterday put your flash drive in and put it on the memory. Yeah. If you do not do that, he will take that flash drive out and your yeah. car will stop. He's not ready to program in USB. Yes. Did you do that to him? No, uh, he did it to Marshall. I do it to people all the time. And so what happens when you run the program oh, off, off the USB? Yes, I put it yeah. in. It sometimes will not run all functions. It oftentimes will not graphically check all functions. And sometimes, depending on what you're doing. So like on the parts that we're going to run today, we're going to run a totally different job today. All together. Um, Part of it runs so fast, it shakes the machine so much that if you run on the USB, it'll wiggle the USB out. Oh, wow. And when it does it, the machine's just going to stop, and you're not going to know why. And so it does, you should you should not need the USB. You're in the habit of not using it. In the habit of not using the USB. Like, I'm getting, I am, yeah. I am sitting inside my machine. We'll say a spindle, and, and it's, a, it's actually a, a, a drill bit. We're running another it part. Say it's a drill bit and all that, but in the beginning it says spindle. Why does it do that? So it's whatever tools in the spindle. Oh. That's how much trouble I was having yesterday. Said my tool spindle was in five. And he didn't tell you which ones are in the spindle. Am I allowed to go talk to? Mark? It tells you that in the tool. There and do all that. Let me explain what we're doing today, and then you can do that. Okay. So here's what we're making today. I knew we were going to make those. <laughs> make a snowman. The person didn't make it, did they? Um, he got started on them. Okay. I got them finished up, or at least got them going. So these are snowmen. They need to be ran. Um, and then we also need to run them through a, the deburr if we can, because I really don't necessarily want this just aluminum finish on the outside. I'd like to have them deburred. So... Um, they could be a little more defined, but I don't want to go in and grab a even smaller end mill than what we're doing. I've got some machines set up to do multiple features and functions. I have one mini mill right now that's down at the very end. It's the one that faces that way. I was using yesterday. Um, the one that opened with a fucking switch. Nope. nope. It's the one across nope. from it. I know. On track. Um, that machine is what I'm going to call the master. It can do every single operation on the machines right now, okay? But what I want you to do is I want you to, um, I want you to set a machine up to drill the blanks. So, um, Selby's already sawed them all to nine inches long. Um, so somebody can set up, we'll stack the blanks up. He can explain to you how we're doing those, or I can explain to you how we're doing those. We'll stack them up in there. We'll drill them out. We've already got a vice stop set up. Um, we're going to make them a little bit bigger than the holes that we've drilled here. Um, so we've got those. So they, first operation, they got to go from this to having holes in them. We've got two of these made. These are the fixtures. You're going to bolt it in at the top and the bottom of the snowman, okay? You, you've got to make sure, you can only run one at a time on this. It only runs like, it's like a minute, 30 seconds to run the entire thing, so it's super fast. This hole right here is 
y0 x 0.75. I'll show you when you set that up, I'll show you a really simple way to set it up um, so that you can get this thing done. And, and so um, there's two of these currently right now. There's one already on the mill and then there's this one we'll set up on another mill. So the idea is that we've got so we have a production line pretty much. Okay. We've got the first operation being ran over on the mill that is connected to the mm -hmm. fan and robot. It's going to be drilling through the stack of them. Okay, it's going to be doing this. Yeah. We've got the one mini mill down there that's already set up with one of these. We're going to set up another one of these um, to do the the profiling. Okay, so we'll set up another one of our mills, yeah. a three axis mill for that. Um, if it looks like we're not moving fast enough, we're going to go back to that last mini mill. We're going to make some more of these. These take about ten minutes to make. So. Saw them nine inches long, called program. I've got all the programs already set up in that machine. Working together or all of us going to a different machine and setting it all so, up? Um, I want you to work um, individually together. So you're going to go to, you're going to say, I'm going to do this part, I'm going to do this part, I'm going to do this part. We've got enough to make about 400 of them, I think. Um, they're already stacked up out there. And you're going to... Um, however fast that we can make them. So this is going to be for December 1st. So that means we've got today to run them, which we won't get a ton done today. Um, we've got Monday to run them, and then you've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to run them, basically. Of, mm, that might not even be true. Um, can you come back I'm not going to pass the, the class. I don't even know why I set up my mill today. Uh, you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week to run them. So, you know, but Where this is Thursday. That'll be Jeep on the green. Oh yeah. Thursday is the first of December. Yeah, it's not this coming. So, December, so December. this is why you can't preload screwing off into your days. Cause when hot jobs like this come through, um, I've got three more of them. I know I only showed two fingers, but I got three more of them coming up, um, of just different ones that are going to be worked into what we do. Okay. So, you, you just we gotta you gotta preload your stuff rather than preload your you know days off. So because you never know what's gonna come up. So um, John Yeager work got shifted to a different shift, and so now he's like scrambling to try to do these things. John Gallo um, work has been different for him, so he's had to shift around the times that he's been able to be here. So. Um, so, so those things, like we've got it, like you have to be, like, that's why you want to front load those things so you don't have problems, okay? So snowmen, snowmen, snowmen are what we're going to be running. We want to get those set up on machines where we can set them and leave them. So if somebody else needs to come in and do something, they can, um, but they just won't be able to do anything in those places. We can do it on the five axis? Would there be enough room in there? I don't know what the advantage of doing that would be. Because uh, I know... You don't because yeah, are we trying you, to center it? you still have to you still have to find X zero Y zero for this hole. You got no advantage in doing that. This is literally you're going to come down here. You're going to put something in the hole and you're going to go part zero set. Yeah, I know. That's what it's, it's just drilling holes for that. It's not. There is no advantage in setup on the five axis. Other actually, yes, you can. Yeah, we'll make another fixture, and you can spend the entire day doing that. No, I'm good because on that. you've got to get you're going to need to get B and C flattened out on your own. So rotation and tilt for the platter, you get those done, and then you can do whatever you want. You can ask me in the class if I can figure it out. <laughs> yes, you just see no matter what, bro. I wouldn't try it. <laughs> Go for it, Brian. I bet I could figure it out. I'll tell you what, if I sit yeah. there for long enough time, I will figure it out. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you just figure this out? You know, because this is what the class is. Yeah, the class isn't doing that. The class right, is doing this. I'm not really going to do that. Okay. So, <laughs> I'll probably just take apart whatever I have on my mill over there and run it on. I, let's go out and take a survey of the land and of what we what is going to be best for us. Okay. Stage that, Brian. All right, <laughs> take a look at it. I've got to leave by 11 today. I
Thomas, someone broke it. I yeah. was going to come over and pick it up, and I just told him. Yeah, pretty, I get it. Pretty big kid, but he literally just sat back in it. And I, just yeah. I just didn't know what to do with it. Now, we should be able to get, get it back. Yes. I'll take it with me now. Okay. Um, um, yeah. But yeah, he sat back in it, and it clunk, and I was like, oh, my. That's not good. Yeah, well, they don't make them like they used to. That's no joke, man. I mean, those chairs from 1985 are still wandering around. You know? Yes. But we're getting rid of them by the auction. <laughs> I know. Replace them with these disposable ones, right. you know. But yeah, I just, I mean, he broke it the other day, and I was like, oh, we should yeah, do something with it, so. Yeah, I'm